Hi, I'm Rob Cos and welcome to my shop. If you've seen any of my videos, you know how important my shooting board is. What you may not have seen is the small one that I sometimes use with my block plane. Fits the bill when this one is too big. We're going to build one. Stay with us. I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new and you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the notification bell so you'll receive alerts when we release a new video. And anytime we use a special tool, we'll always leave a description down below. All right, let's get to work. As I mentioned, this is my normal shooting board. I use it constantly. In fact, I can't think of a time when I built something that I didn't use it. However, it takes up a lot of room on the bench. So I'm constantly, when I'm done, taking it, sliding it back in the slot, bringing it back up. It's made out of one inch MDF. It's nice and heavy, accurate, stays put, designed to be used with my five and a half. Now, there are times when I would prefer something a little smaller. If I'm making small boxes, it's much more convenient and it also allows me to have things just a little bit tighter. So that's why I came up with this little mini shooting board to be used with my block plane. When you're making boxes like that and you've got really small pieces, it's nice to be able to have the fence even closer and just everything in general is a lot closer, a lot tighter. So, and I don't have nearly as long a stroke depth to take. Now I've redesigned this to make it a little more pleasing in terms of how it looks and that's what I want to walk you through is the process of putting this together and coming out with something that is nice and accurate for those small pieces and designed to be used with your block plane. <clears throat> I whipped this one up out of need one night and I uh, wasn't paying too much attention to the proportions and it turns out it's rather clunky. I don't think we need three quarter for the base so I wanted to redesign it and make it a little more pleasing to look at and also good to use. So the, there's four pieces. There is the base, there's the top, there's the fence, and there's the cleat. And you can use just about any material, but there's a few that I think you need to pay particular attention to. I prefer to use MDF on the bottom because it's nice and stable. Now I chose a piece of 5 8 You could go half. I just thought 3 quarter was a little bit too big. So I'm using 5 8 The uh, dimensions are 12 inches in length, 8 inches in width, and then 5 eighths of an inch in thickness. Now the top, and this is where you want to use, I think you want to use Baltic birch or what's called Russian plywood if you can get it. The reason is all of the pieces are birch and one runs this way, the next one runs that way. If you buy the inexpensive stuff, the core is sometimes nothing more than a weed wood and it just isn't going to wear well and that plane is going to run up against that edge over the life of the shooting board so you may as well make it nice and tough. So that's quarter inch. It is 12 inches in length as well, but I got it cut back to six and a half inches in width. You want to make a little area that the plane is going to run on and it needs to be at least as wide as the plane is tall. I made mine a little bit wider. Third piece, and I just used some scraps. This happens to be babinga. This is going to be the cleat that goes underneath fastens on there like that to prevent this from moving forward when you're using it. It wants to be the full width of the base piece, which is eight inches. I made this three quarters of an inch wide and three eighths of an inch in thickness. And we'll fasten that underneath. And then this piece is going to be your fence. Now, your fence takes a fair bit of abuse because pieces get pounded into that just from the very nature of the way you use the shooting board. So the harder the wood, the better. This piece I made Again, I just took it out of my scrap pile, but it's an inch and an eighth wide. It is just under, it's actually 11 sixteenths thick. And I want it to be almost the width of the top. However, when I say almost, I don't want to be touching that with the end of the plane. So I pull it back here just a little bit, and then my plane never actually cuts into it. So those are the four pieces. You can find them in your scrap bin usually but we're gonna go ahead and put all this together and make ourselves a wonderful little shooting board. Okay, we gotta get these pieces ready. I prefer not to have saw marks. So the only thing that really is critical in terms of being square is the uh, front face that needs to be square to the bottom that's glued on here. So we can do that. It's nice to have a shooting board to do it, but you don't. So I'm gonna, I'm going to uh, flatten that bottom off. And I'll use my five and a half. Uh, 
Okay, and then let's see if we can determine the grain direction. I think it's going to go this way. And we'll check that. And we've got to get it square and straight. Okay, now that is high on this outside edge. So I'm just going to check this and see if I. All right. I'm going to plane that so that it just takes off the high edge over here. So I'm running the plane so it's flush with this edge. You'll notice that the blade doesn't come all the way over here. So if this side is low and this side is high, this side remains untouched. And we take down that high outside edge. A couple of passes. And then I'll do one complete one. Complete meaning I plane from side to side. Check that again. Okay, that's square. Now we want it to be straight. Nothing worse than trying to hold a flat piece in there and that's not straight and your piece is wobbling. It just, you cannot do accurate work that way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check the side of my plane. First, I'm gonna mark this so that we know which one we're referencing. Okay, I'd rather have it slightly concave than have it convex at all, so that's good. And I'm just going to put an arrow on here so I know which side is going to be the one that we're shooting against. Now, just for the sake of cleaning it up, we'll plane the top. And we'll plane that back edge. And this, as I said, is just to get rid of saw marks. Okay, so that one's ready to go. This one, just as long as it's close, that's all that matters. Just get rid of the saw marks again. Pull the blade in a little bit. Okay, so those two are done. Now we've got to cut a little rabbit or rebate along here. And the purpose of that is so when you're setting your plane on there, that little part right to here at the bottom runs below the blade so that your blade's not cutting into the side of your, of your top. Now I want to make sure that this is nice and straight. So I'm going to put that in the vise. Get a straight edge on that. It's not pivoting, so I'm going to say that that's good. Now I'm going to pick out what I think is the best face. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. It's actually got a little bit of a cup like that, and that's what I want. Now I need to explain this to you. It's more apparent in a large shooting board. When we make our shooting boards, we actually build into it a slight cup this way. If you're playing, and because your shooting board is made out of two pieces and you've got a glue line in there, it throws a little bit of stress into it. If your shooting board ends up like this, what happens, you want this to be square. The minute that this ends up being slightly cupped, and, and I'm going to illustrate this by just putting something underneath here. Because what would happen, because your plane is wide here, narrowed here, the minute there's a bit of a cup, the plane tips this way, and all of a sudden you're not square anymore. So what I do is I make it so it's like this. You're always resting on the widest spot, and just the weight of using it, you're going to push that flat. But it's better to push it flat than to have it in the other direction, which you really can't do anything with frustrating if your shooting board ends up that way. And because the block plane is the same situation, wide in the middle, narrow in the ends, if that were to sit in a cupped area, it would, it would tip out as well, just like that, so we can't have it. So what we'll do is we'll just put a couple strips of masking tape along here, and then when we clamp it, we'll clamp it to a solid surface, and that'll have it just bow ever so slightly, so when it dries, 
it won't spring back and it'll keep that slight cup front to back. But we've got to cut our little rabbit in here next. So what I'm going to do is use, you can do that on the table saw. You can use a skew block plane. You could use a rabbit plane. You could use a uh, shoulder plane. I'm going to use my skew block plane simply because it's got a built-in fence. And I'm just going to come in here. Now I'm going to cut through, I'm going to cut down to about a little less than an eighth of an inch. Okay, I'll leave it right there. Now, I'm going to take this over to a flat surface. I just want to show you why. I want to work with the material as it is instead of forcing something upon it. So I'm going to set it on a flat surface and just see which way it's naturally cut. Make sure there's no debris on there. So if I spin it like that, it has a tendency to pivot in the middle. If I turn it over, and it pivots from the outside edges. So I'm going to guess and say that this has a slight curve this way. So I'm just going to put an X on the side that we're going to glue to. And then we already determined that on this piece. If I flipped it over, it spins in the middle. So that has a cup like this. May as well do the same thing, which is what we did in cutting that rabbit there. So we're going to glue these two pieces just like that. We want a good surface to glue it to, and I can may as well just use this table saw. So I'm going to go get some tape and some glue, and we'll show you how we do that. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is turn this over, find the center. And this is uh, automotive tape, painter's tape, and it's sticks a little bit better. I'm going to put four layers, I guess. Just guessing. So based on how much that sticks up, that'll work. So that's going to sit right there. This is the top side. Make sure there's no dust on the bottom side so that the glue sticks. Now, we don't want that to slide around. So once I put the glue on, I'm going to tack, put a couple of uh, brads. I'm gonna start them actually right now. And then I'll drive those home. And that'll just keep it from shifting on me as we start clamping it. I'm going to put a call here and one out here. I'm going to put a piece of inch and a half by inch and a half on both ends and two clamps. And I think that's going to apply enough pressure that that'll, that'll get a good uh, glue joint between those two pieces. So with that done, I'm going to go ahead and spread the glue on here. And I've got a little, a little tooth trowel that will just ensure that uh, we have enough glue. I'm using Type Bond 3 for no other reason than it just happens to be the glue I like the most. Thanks to my friend Ahmed for sending me this handy little bottle. Now you want to make sure you have glue right out on the edges. And I'm going to get close up here, but not, I don't want to have to go in and try to get glue out of that uh, corner between the plywood and the MDF. So I'll hold back about, oh, I don't know, an eighth of an inch or so. I didn't put on as much as I thought I did. Put 
that trowel needs to be cleaned out. Okay, flip that over without getting it all over everywhere. Now we can trim this afterwards, but I want to get that so that those two surfaces are flush. Now, find a good pot we can clamp. Put that strip right there. And this one right here. Put that piece right there and that one right there and this will certainly minimize the number of clamps required. I don't think I need one in the middle. I think the curvature will provide enough pressure that it will do the job. Clamp that down. Okay, now we'll give that 20 minutes. 20, 25 minutes to set up. Okay, that's had enough time in the clamps. Now, I'm gonna flush up this side by just using it on the table saw. This one's already nice and clean. So, just take a small amount off. Now I want to just clean this up a little bit before I put those cleats on. It's a lot easier to do it now. I'm using 150 grit with a piece of one inch MDF and a piece of felt just to, uh, that makes the sanding a little bit better than just having the sandpaper with a solid backing. That's all it needs. Now, a couple things to check. I want to make sure that um, this is nice and straight. So, retract my blade my longer plane in there and see the fact that wait, wait a second just to make sure that pivots and that can't do that so either I've got some oh there's a little piece of glue or something in there let's try that again Okay, that's good. Now, we'll put this on first. We've already marked it. This is gonna sit out like this. And we want this to be square to here. But what I find it's easier, if you take a plane, clamp the plane to this, and then using a reliable square, Clamp the square to the plane, clamp this fence to the square, and then put a couple of clamps on here to hold that everything all in place. We'll come back after the fact and we'll put a couple of screws up through the bottom to hold this securely. I, I, can't, I don't want to rely on just glue alone. I want some mechanical fasteners. But you don't want just mechanical fasteners without glue because there's always a tendency for that to creep just a little bit. So I wanna set this up at the end of the bench so that I can get okay. it. Okay, this part has to be precise. Shooting board isn't square. Now you can always fix it if you have to, but better to get it right the first time. So I've got this set up. The first thing I wanna do is clamp this 
plain. Tight. Make sure it's tight against this part of the shooting board. Nice to have an array of clamps. Okay, so that won't move. Now, I like to have the fence pulled back from the edge. I'll explain why when we actually use this. And that's about that's probably far enough for this small of a of a uh, shooting board. So now we're going to go in here and make sure that that square is held tight to the sole. Uh, get out of there of the plane. Now we're going to come in, we're going to clamp this like that, and then we're going to put a clamp here and a clamp there. I'm going to purposely keep the end of the shooting board back from the ed edge of the, from the uh, surface of the plane, so I don't want to be there. I'll go right about there. And then these two clamps will hold it, so let's put some glue on there. Remember, we're going to come in and reinforce this with screws from the bottom side, but we need the glue to... Don't want a whole lot, simply because I don't want glue squeezing out the front. If you want, in fact, we'll do this. We'll go in. We're just going to cut a uh, a little chamfer, not too deep, because if you're doing really thin stock, you don't want it to fall into there. Just enough to help keep debris from getting right into that corner. Now I'm just going to spread this real quickly. Staying away from that front edge. Best glue spreader you'll ever find. Remember, hold that back. If you want to, you could even put a couple pieces of paper in there just to. Now, this is going to have a tendency to, to uh, lift up, so just put enough pressure on there to hold that in here clamp that down uh, we can get one in there or not Okay, so we'll give that 20 minutes and then we'll be able to go in and screw that without having to worry about that moving. If you try to screw and glue at the same time, it almost always has a tendency to want to creep. Now, put this cleat on the underside. And remember, we're going to reinforce that with screws as well. Now, I don't mind some squeeze out on the ends and on the front side, but if I have it on the inside, then I gotta go and scrape it off. So I'll just come in there with my thumb. That's a bit heavy. that flush on the ends close as I can to being flush on the front and just hold that for a second and then it'll tack a little bit and then when I put the clamps on it won't have such a tendency to squirm we're also going to knock all these corners off with the block plane just so that it's a little more comfortable when you're carrying it and moving it around
moved a little bit. Try it this way. Flush. Okay, we'll give that a few minutes to dry. And then we'll come in and put the screws on both the fence and the cleat. Now I'm using number six screws and I'm gonna put four in there just for the, because that takes a fair bit of abuse banging against the edge of your bench. This one, because it's going through just the, or into the 5 8 ply, is going to be three quarter and the others will be one inch. So I'm going to divide this up. I'm gonna come in a half an inch from either end with one. That leaves me seven inches. We'll divide that by three, it'd be about two and five sixteenths. So one here and one here. So I've got my countersink set for the first one, which is the shorter of the two. And the binga is hard. In fact, it's also brittle. So what I need to do is counter bore through the babinga with a drill bit that's the same size as the outside diameter right at the thread. If you don't, I find that it's great tendency to split. No, I didn't get that uh, I didn't get that countersunk deep enough and that started to slip on the drill. Okay, so on these ones, I'm gonna go four as well. So I'm gonna, because I'm drilling into the, into the, uh, the babinga, I'm gonna come in a little bit closer. So I'm gonna come in three quarter. So let's just write this down. We're gonna, in from the end, we'll go, the first one will be three quarter. Uh, the final one will go five and three quarter. And so if we're here and we're here, that leaves us five in the middle. Divide that by three, inch and a half, an inch and a half, an inch and a half is four and a half, so let's go inch and five eighths. So if we come in inch and five eighths, let's draw a light line across there. So we're at three quarter two and three eighths, four and an eighth, and five and three quarter. Now for this one, we're gonna go down an inch and a quarter, that'll give us, get us into the, <clears throat> that'll get us into the babinga, but I'm gonna set the, I'm gonna set the, uh, no, that one's too big. I'm gonna set the, bit to go a little bit deeper. Sometimes the bing is really susceptible to splitting and if we go the full depth with that I'm afraid it's just not wide the countersink's not going to be wide, wide enough to prevent that from splitting so we've got a little bit of room I'll go a little bit longer. You want to make sure the countersinks are deep enough that the head of the screws sit below the surface. You don't want them scratching your bench. OK. 
Okay, now we got to flush that up. We got to flush these up. I'm going to go back over to the belt sander. We could also do that with a plane if we had to. Clean up those surfaces. Um, we'll come back. We'll cut our chamfers on some of these surfaces, not all of them. I'll show you what I mean. And then we'll uh, brand it. And the last thing to do is just to spray a finish on it. Now, anywhere you're going to touch this, you want to ease off those corners. I'm, I'm going to just take a little bit off of here. Yeah, but other than that, I'll do, I'm just using a little squirrel tail to that corner, to that one. Now, to get along this long one, I'm just going to come in here sideways and then skew it around. I can't do much on that one. You could do it with some sandpaper if you wanted. Do this one. Do this long one. This one's tricky because you have a tendency to blow off either the plywood or the babinga. Better done with a block plane. Okay. So that's all the corners. Make sure we don't have any glue sticking out here, which would interfere with the board when we're trimming it. Oh well. Now, it definitely needs to have a coat of spray on it because MDF is so susceptible to moisture damage. So I'm gonna, I just use a lacquer, two or three coats, and works great. But I'm not gonna bother waiting to do that now when I'm gonna get my plane, grab a piece of wood, and we'll test this just to make sure it works the way we want. We recently did uh, a couple of videos on spraying, one using a spray can, the other using an HVLP. So we'll leave a link below if you want some help on that. So if I wanted to plane the end of this holly, first thing I would need to do is to flip it over, cut a little chamfer, a little more blade, a little chamfer on the end to avoid having that tear out when you cross the end. Flip it over. And that works great. Just uh, the size is perfect for doing small stuff like that. So there you go. A block plane size shooting board. Uh, if you like my work, if you like my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos to help take your woodworking to the next level. And I've always said better tools make it a whole lot easier. If you click on the icon with the plane and the chisel, it'll take you to our website, introduce you to all of our tools, and also talk to you about our online and in-person workshops. Good luck in your woodwork.